Excuse me, gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Oh, no, that's all right. <laughs> Getting on 6 o'clock. It is uh, Monday, uh, June 20th, uh, 2023. Uh, we're here at the uh, John Public Meeting Room. And we have guests from uh, over town. We have a uh, quick meeting tonight, but a very uh, important one. We're going to have uh, some general public comment to start. And then we'll go on to the local concerns for the gallery. Uh, uh, sidewalks and keep me. I'm doing the uh, you see on the screen some wave. I'm missing something. And we got Nick joining us. Okay, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, is there anyone here tonight that's here uh, just for general public comment? General public comments. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to the local concerns for the gallery for scoping study. And from the state of Vermont, we have Chris Hunt. Chris, do you want to roll up? And Emily uh, Lewis as well from uh, New Voice and King. Hey, Chris. Hey, everybody doing? Yeah. Um, right there's fine, or wherever you guys can be comfortable. Um, go ahead and, um, and, and Don. Uh, actually, you're kind of uh, overseeing this project. If you want to uh, kick us off, Tom. Well, I mean, we're just, you know, basically getting in the way. Um, this is, as I understand it, the first phase of before um, of, of starting up. Oh, we have some more, some more folks coming in. Okay. Yeah. Good to start. And um, so, you know, we walked the. We, Go to the site and we walk the walk the area that's under consideration for the shared path sidewalk. And um, the boys that came now starts to go through um, putting together all the facets of, of making it happen, you know, the engineering what's in the way, what might have to be moved, how it can get made out. And this first step is really to get some public input. And um, <laughs> And then move on from there. So, that's what you're going to do. Do you want to facilitate that, or how do you want to start that? Yep, uh, I'm going to have a presentation. Yeah, to have, I didn't put it on the laptop. It's just that one, right? I also I have my laptop as well. I can log in if needed. Okay. And join, I can join on the, the Zoom. To share. I'll use a shift check off. Oh, no, that's all right. Before we start going, check the microphone. We have some other people here. We have people who are going to show them that they're speaking up. Have some more people joining? Yes. Great. Do you need the meeting ID or whatever? So let's give it the. Hit enter too soon, now it's being Is that your breakfast? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Get right in construction season, I feel like we never finish the line. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wi Fi password? Um, Sasha can get that for you. Hey, Sasha? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Good, thanks for coming up. Yeah, we're next. 
You should give a shout. Oh, my She's amazing. My red is on. Okay. So they can't connect. So you can. Okay, I've been playing the water table too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or do you have another email? Why don't you send it to Sasha? <laughs> I'd, I'd send it to Sasha, so it should be in a hotel somewhere. Hi, Sasha. So, okay, um, Emily, you can go. Yeah. All right, thanks so much for, for having, having us here tonight. I'm Emily Lewis, uh, landscape architect and planner with Du Bois and King. Uh, a few other members of my team that are not here tonight, but uh, Dan Malik and Bruce Lakeback are- you Just one second. You go ahead and go ahead and continue. Uh, are, are also part of, part of my team, and then we're uh, joined by uh, Chris from v Trans, who's uh, kind of helping, helping lead the effort from the state side.
at the corridor and seeing what constraints might be there that we might need to take into consideration. So we know that there are some underground utilities. Um, there might be future utilities in the area. Uh, several road crossings, several of which that are quite wide at the moment. Uh, stormwater infrastructure, particularly on the north side of the road, adjacent property uses of the cemetery uh, that would need to be considered. And then other elements like vegetation and fences that aren't, may need to be relocated or replanted depending on um, where the sidewalk might go. And we'll look at configurations as should it be directly adjacent to the road, offset from the road. Um, and so from there, I want to get any feedback from tonight, any concerns or questions that you may have about the project, local knowledge uh, that we might, that we as consultants or the state might not be aware of. We'll start designing those concepts. Um, and then later in the fall, uh, we'll host a second public meeting to review those different alternatives and determine and get input again and then determine which should be uh, the recommended alternative to present to the town, to recommend to the town report. Looks like that's it. That's it. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Like, what do you want to see? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I'm Carla Francis, and this is Frank and Gabriel, my husband and son, and we live in Gallery Acres. We've been in for a couple years, and so we love, you know, walking into town primarily with the shoulder right now, which is pretty tough on the Gallery Acres side of Route Two, where it, as a pedestrian, it's okay, but with a stroller, it's pretty treacherous. And so we'd love to see something that's, um, you know, kind of ADA accessible. So. Bikers, strollers, anybody can get from our neighborhood into town and connect to where that sidewalk starts right by Snowfire. So right now it feels like we're kind of cut off as pedestrians when the weather is bad. Yeah. Uh, snow, ice, that kind of thing. So you can do it in the summer, but it's not safe. You can go fairground, but it's around about right now. So, I mean, I see us using this multiple times week as a family and as Gabriel gets older hopefully be able to walk in bike into town, you know, without us, but still in a safe way. Thank you. Yeah, I guess uh, my wife Kirsten and I, this is our son Miles. Um, we moved into Gallery Acres uh, about two years ago, two and, two and four years ago now, and yeah, I've enjoyed walking into Waterbury. There's lots of amenities, um, farmers market, restaurants, things of that nature, playgrounds for kids that are nearby. Um, we've been to Trek, I don't know, probably a dozen times already, it seems like, um, to this winter and this summer. Um, it would definitely be a great improvement to have some place for, you know, there's, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 kids in the Gallagher Acres neighborhood or always riding their bikes around and you know as they get older I imagine they're gonna you know, wanna go to other kids' houses uh, in the neighborhoods of Waterbury Village. Um, and uh, besides being pretty treacherous in the winter as Carla mentioned, um, that intersection of Route 2 and 100 is pretty expansive. It always feels like kind of playing a game of chicken there, you know, was, there's always cars turning up to go to Stowe and in all directions. Trying to cross by fairgrounds and snow fire, so I think maybe uh, signalized, you know, uh, crosswalk or something like that would really, uh, I imagine, go hand in hand with adding accessibility such as sidewalk to that. Yeah, there's no way to do it correctly as a pedestrian. There's like no right way. <laughs> so Gabe yeah. and I have been buzzed by a big truck. I wasn't in the right because there was no crosswalk, but he definitely wasn't in the right to buzz an infant. Yeah. <coughs>
super similar stories that I'd like to reiterate that there's just no good way to leave the neighborhood. We're pretty much locked there unless you start walking on people's lawns or uh, or up fairgrounds road and then making an illegal crossing on, on 100. Um, so yeah, in, in the winter in particular, as they said, but the summer uh, presents its own problems as well. Um, so yeah, uh, same story. Um, just wanted to reiterate it. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, is there anyone else online? Uh, there's Paul Trusty. Paul, do you want to make a comment? It's not, how about Myra? You probably heard plenty from us already about food tape, but yeah, we agree with the neighbors and just everything that's been mentioned already. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, when you think about this, like what material do you envision? Do you envision a sidewalk, gravel, like wide enough to accommodate bikes and pedestrians at the same time? Like what's in your minds when you think about this? Uh, I think ideally a sidewalk. I think there's lots of um, like trucks and tractor trailers that go by, so just having that space. Um, and curbing as well, so mm -hmm. the curb step. The closing curves to join the sidewalk to, to, to connect them. If you're going to build it on both sides, you're going to let people come across the road to the, you know, but some some sort of wherever the intersection is, something will ramp. It's also accessible for like clouds. I'm assuming, I'm just asking, is there going to be parking along that road where the sidewalk is? No, it's just going to be pedestrian access. Yeah, like, yeah. there's not enough right away there for a sidewalk in right. I don't think it's going to be a road by road so. I'm um, excited to see this because yeah. I'm not very easy to see. Yep. Yeah. Does everybody see it being on the uh, challenge acre size? That would be the preferred side for the sidewalk. That's, that's what we've been yeah. saying. Yeah, we walk yeah. along the grass there. Right? Mm -hmm. We walk that too. Yeah, right? that's a, that allows you to connect like at snow fire, you know, snow fire. Yeah, it right. seems to make the most sense oh, to yeah. cross there as opposed to like crossing across the road and going on. Yeah, you avoid two, two crosswalks by doing it that way, right? Yeah. So, on the south side. I agree with what you said on the I live here from Colchester and all the, you know, around the neighborhood, there's a sidewalk and going up and down to the corners and the city. And the and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, does, does this thing have a 40 or even 50 coming in from Moortown to Waterbury there? It's 50 and then it turns to 35. Yeah. 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 Probably never any police officers on on Route Two there, and you know, um, I think definitely having something uh, with like a green space, you know, a kind of a buffer zone from the road there would, would probably be nice. And I know curves are more expensive, um, but if it could be like elevated too and kind of kind of have that protection and not maybe be road level, and there's a lot more. Is there enough room for green space and the sidewalk? Um, it's pretty tight. To, to be determined. Yeah. Yeah, I have to take a look. Uh, it's it's not super tight, kind of at first glance. Um, but I want to take a look into that a bit more. Yeah. Are, are there any other kind of alternatives you guys can think of to section the road off a little? If the curb is right on the road, like pylons or something like that, especially on more exposed areas. Um, I mean, if it's a sidewalk, there has to be some type of barrier between the road. If that's if we're going with a you know concrete sidewalk that you're used to seeing like in the village here. Um, so there has to be a curb barrier, um, but yeah, uh, delineators or pylons. There are different options for high traffic areas or more dangerous curves. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> also, if uh, I know sh shared use path is also an option, I don't know if longevity is an issue with doing asphalt and you know, developing you know, cracks and ruts and curves and things like that. If a sidewalk is uh, the option to go with, um, I wonder if like a even a uh, bike lane also would be able to be put in since you're getting a little bit of mm -hmm. width there. Um, are there bike lanes further up route two? Um, no. Okay. It's pretty sketchy. Mm -hmm. yeah. once, once you get into town, there's quite a few uh, ways to, to, to move on the road. There's breakdowns and parking spots, and the road itself goes down to 25, and it's much, much more bikeable. Uh, and of course, there's sidewalks once you get past Snowfire. So going in that direction, it, it's a matter of just the distance from the neighborhood to that corner. And what is that distance? Uh, from the neighborhood to 100. To Route 100. About a third of a mile. Okay. It's such a short section to feel totally isolated in the winter, especially. Yeah. There's so many yeah. people that live here, but we're just cut off. We can drive, but it's Vermont. It'd be better to walk. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> now that we, we've done this, this here and here, what are the next steps that we need to do to move forward? So the next steps will be on uh, D and K. We'll start putting to start coming up with alternatives, which just which entails looking a little bit closer um, at the area, looking at where the right of way is. What are any ob obstructions that um, that reside within there to be able to determine how much room might there be to be able to do. Uh, is it, is it sidewalk right adjacent to the road, or can there be a buffer? I'm going to start looking at some of those options. Um, I'll continue to meet monthly with Chris and with Don to review those. And when do you expect the study to be complete? We have a station somewhere in the middle of next year, is what I think I have on the grant agreement. All yeah. right. And so the next step for this group will be an alternative presentation, which we'll do at another slide like this. Okay. And that will be do nothing, do this, or yep. be the side of the road, or that side of the road. Right side yeah. walk, or, or it could be, asphalt, yeah, or it could be you know, this side of the road, but two different options okay. on this side of the road. Okay. So, kind of sounds like tonight, like it might be the, be, be the direction we want to look at, but yeah. All right, well, but we'll at least take a cursory look at both sides <laughs> as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A crosswalk and putting the sidewalk on the other side, it's hard because you're not going to have the warrants on two. Um, the amount of po um, pedestrians, daily traffic, to right. warrant it, we could get an exception, but um, there, there's a lot of factors against that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there are on top of the yeah. yeah. And topography issues and yeah. cemetery and things uh, there. And this is a safety issue, I think, alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't want to cross that, whether there's right. a signal crosswalk or not. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll just kind of look at it and kind of note those issues as to why of that and, and so might not be an alternative. And then once this feasibility study is complete at that point, can we go ahead and start um, looking for funds for the cycle? Yep, this would be yep. a good, um, so this is a transportation alternative grant mm -hmm. for the study um, that would qualify for design construction or through bike pen. Both of those programs would be good for this. And when do we have to um, wait for the completion of this study, or can we move forward? Um, probably can't without. Yeah, the, I mean, the study will be the application, pretty much. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, folks uh, from Gallagher Acres and about, I appreciate everyone coming in tonight, whether it be online or here in person. Uh, any questions? Um, pop up as you're uh, going along. You know, this is a, a long-term process here, or at least another six to eight months while they're putting it together. Feel feel free at any point um, to let us know what you're thinking. 
can come up with some new ideas. Uh, we'll be working with Dubois and King and Chris Hunt from the state. Um, but we will certainly get this feasibility studied and hopefully move forward with a sidewalk for you. Yep, uh, Don, Don's your municipal project manager, so if you want to filter the questions through him, they will get them to us, or it's pretty easy to find our contact info too. Yep. Yep. And uh, also, just as an aside to this, and I've been working with John, uh, if you could please, you know, make sure we have, can we tell to you and get in contact, contact with you and folks online as well. But we are, you know, uh, one of your neighbors in Fairground, uh, Laura Gaines, she in instigated the speed change to 35 by writing a letter to, to uh, speed change. And, um, with the, she, her goal was to drop it to 25, but you can't because the speed's coming from 50, right? So the only way you could drop it was to 35. But there is some, you know, the, the process could be revisited to get the speed to, from 50 to 40 to 25 in that area. So we are going to try to move forward with that and write a letter and get support from, you know, neighbors and folks in that area. So uh, that would be great. salvage yard and as a board we decided um, that we were not going to sign that um, specifically because the place is looking uh, pretty run down um, and, and not really conforming to, to lots of okay. yeah you guys would like to introduce yourselves and uh, I'm Steve Everin uh, part owner of GHR Enterprises and I'm Kale over so, um, what are your plans down there, guys? You, the, the place has uh, got fences falling in, fences falling over. As, as you know, what we've purchased uh, has um, been degrading, and we are doing our best to, to get it fixed up, and we are going to continue eventually brand new fence. Um, we'll repair what is falling down now as required because the state says shielding. It doesn't specify that it's got to be great shielding, and as you know, it is not great shielding, but it is shielding the property. Um, it's our goal this year, but one, to find a fencing company that can do it, uh, it's been a challenge. Um, the site overall has improved. Kale uh, manages it, and people coming in have said, you know, it, it looks better than it has, but it still is a scrap yard. Um, our goal is, yes, new fence. Um, some of the buildings should be coming down in the next year or two. Um, as we can, we're going to improve the site because, especially during the spring and that, um, the area is quite, is quite messy. 
Um, but like anything, we're we've been at it for four years and making improvements. Definitely the fencing has been on our list and uh, we've had one issue that that southern fence fell. Yeah. So we did put up some shielding as the state requires. Is it beautiful? Not at all. Um, do we want to get something better in there? Yes. Um, it meets the state requirements, have you? Um, and we are working to get something better. You know, when you, I know you're trying to move the hard you can, but you have the idea. Again, finding a fence company has been the hardest. Um, so I've, had, I've put out three bids and have gotten none, literally no return. Um, we use Google Earth to show them what we want. Yeah. It's about 300 feet of new fence. The northern part, um, we don't use as much and probably will eventually uh, do something different there. Um, but if we have to, we talk that, that we may put the fence in ourselves because it just, it just we can't find it. Right. And I, I also own an excavation company, so that you know it makes it a little easier for us. Um, but we haven't, you know, haven't pushed it. And now that you are pushing us, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, we we will. Um, they we want to be good neighbors and work with you. We want businesses in town. And, you know, a junker is a junker. I, I'm not expecting to see um, you know Disney over there, but uh, but a nice sense. Or not uh, sorry, appropriate fencing for a junkyard, and you know, we're not seeing that. And uh, so I, I would like to somehow—I um, don't know whether uh, a site visit might be um, uh, up for everyone or not. But uh, somewhere we can get some agreement so we can get you a certificate, but also get some um, assurance that what's going to happen uh, going forward. We definitely give you insurance. If you say, hey, we'd like to see a, a, an offense by X amount of date, we'll do our best to um, uh, abide by that. Yeah. And if there, for some reason, not, we will give you good documentation why that's not happening. Um, the coal, uh, um, as it's called, uh, we do need to get it in in a month, you know, this month, because it, I think it is, ends in August. Okay. And they give you a month that it has to be in beforehand. Um, being, we knew that shielding, and that's just what they call it, they don't call it fencing, they call it shielding. And he's like, you're meeting the shielding requirements. Now, you know, it's not pretty. Um, what would the town, what, what type of deadline would you like to see for us? Well, I go by that site fairly recently, and there was definitely pieces of fence that were just not attached. To the right. Fence. Yeah. I'd like to see those, if, if some repair. best faith effort to, to repair those. I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so, 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 so six, eight, six, six, eight panels. Of yeah, some two by fours, and some, you know. Yeah. So yeah. why don't, why don't um, we try to get over there within um, Maybe the, the pressure of the holiday we're running up against. Um, well, how about we say we can get those patches up sooner rather than later? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll prioritize those and get those up. And then um, as far as new fence, I, I, I guess I'm just going to have to price what it's going to cost for us to put it up. Um, because, as I said, we've been three or four companies and just no one gets back. I mean, you're fairly busy over there, though. Yes, yeah. yeah, and that's, hence, that's why the fence isn't fixed. Yeah. So we right. apologize for that. Yeah. So you make a lot of money yeah. so you can fix the fence. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, you make a lot of money on it. Yeah. 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 There's not a lot of scrap metal places in the state, really. No. Correct. That's you guys like Bolden around here, right? That's about it. Yeah. So um, you've also got a permit from the state, though, too, right? You get one from the town and the state? Yes, it, the, we have to. Provide the coal, and yep. then they okay it. And you know, um, it has, yeah. When we knew the fencing um, has been an issue, and we we're trying to address it. You know, uh, fixing it, we can we'll make that more appropriate now. Right? We can match it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Long-term goals are to improve uh, how 
and we have it working on it, but uh, improving the whole area. But you know, time and money has right. has been our has been our uh, biggest, and uh, we've gone through a process with the farm yeah. that's almost completed that we should be able to start making some more advances. Is the goal to eventually have a new fence? A new uh, fence uh, and uh, do most of our stuff on concrete oh. rather than rather than any dirt. Yeah. You know, yeah, that was going to be my next question. I mean, I know metal recycling and scrap metal, what you guys are doing, is really important. But it's, I've always been curious, like the, the fluids and the liquids and the oils and stuff that come in. How are you, I'm sure the state must be watching you more than what we can yes. possibly do, because you're right on the Mooski River right there. Yes. And that has come up in the year, and they've come and uh, did some site visits last year and gave us the thumbs up. That the correct things. Cars come in, they go into the building, undercover, drain the fluids. Um, then once we get to a certain amount, we ship them fluids out. Um, uh, and from there, they go in a stack. And then we either crush or bail. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, truck it out. Truck it out. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's minimal, uh, minimal damage to the earth is what we try to do. Very common. Unlike the former owner, a little bit more conscientious about it. How long have you been doing it? Just was this your first enterprise with scrapyard? Uh, with scrapyard, yes. I've been doing excavation for 30 plus years, and I just wanted to get into something that was more, more steady. Yeah. And it's been a challenge. You know? Yeah. What's your yeah. biggest challenge you've done there? Challenges. Disseminates things to us on a neat basis. Great. Yes, that paper. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, I think what I had mentioned to Sasha was um, I should come in and talk about primarily the Silva appeal. Okay. Um, just to kind of explain to the board why the DRB came down as we did. And, um, and um, you know, I think on Bliss Ridge, I know it's on appeal to the environmental division, our decision. And really, we've done what our job was, which was to hear the application, rule on it. I think, you know, the DRB is kind of done, but maybe not, because, um, you know, really at that point, it's the select board that's um, kind of overseeing the interests of the town. Um, and the most recent development there is the zoning administrator uh, issued a notice of violation. Uh, and I was actually here to vote on the greater article when uh, Dan Von Trapp brought in the appeal from that. So I think we will be hearing that at some point. So uh, that process will you know, follow its process. Um, and it's really not appropriate to you know, make any comment or prejudgment in terms of what the zoning administrator did and how the board uh, might consider it. It's a semi, it's a kind of an appeal where there's uh, rules of evidence involved more so than regular zoning hearings, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, on Mr. Silva's appeal, um, the, um, you know, he came in and kind of explained, you know, we asked him a lot of questions uh, in terms of what, you know, he was applying for, what was expected or what was going to happen. Um, you, you know, the board did issue a decision. I think it was processed as a home occupation. Um, and we felt it didn't really fit into a home occupation category, is how we concluded. But we felt we could approve it um, as a cottage industry, which is a different type of home-based business. Um, so that's what the decision did. Um, it imposed some conditions in terms of let, you know, limitations on lighting <laughs> because the operation, the growing operation for cannabis will use artificial lighting certain times of the year. Um, but essentially, um, and, and in terms of having a security plan and that there's some kind of um, uh, monitoring. And, and, and again, I think we asked questions in terms of what the applicant was planning to do uh, and um, essentially imposed as conditions, you know, the steps that uh, Mr. Silva committed to. But um, so uh, the appeal's been taken. I mean, I think, I think the only reason I wanted to come in was I think the town should um, have an appearance in that matter because part of what's at issue um, is the, the bylaw and whether uh, a cannabis operation can be considered a home occupation. That's not what's being uh, debated uh, from my side. Anyways, I'm not appealing um, the bump up. I'm appealing um, your uh, conditions and attempting to regulate me beyond what you're allowed to by the state, which is just nuisance. And so you put in there that I uh, cannot store, process, or dry cannabis, and that is prohibitive of my enterprise, um, and that's not allowed. And so I actually brought text from Bill H-270, which passed in the last few weeks. And uh, it hasn't been enacted as an act yet because it's just in that limbo time. And here the language uh, does two things. It furthers what I just said. And it also uh, creates a, um, it puts the outdoor portion of my um, business, the outdoor cultivation aspect, into ag. So now it's ag exempt, and um, which means that no conditions can be put, you know, beyond ag nuisance type of stuff. So I have the, I have the info here. I brought it for you guys to read. Um, I have no issues with. Um, what do you know? What's the bill on that? It's H270. H270? Yeah. And so the governor let it pass without signing it. 
Okay. So I had uh, brought this to the attention of the DRB. I had also, you know, the, the thing about nuisance mm -hmm. um, was already law last year, and I also brought that in. The zoning administrator actually supplemented my application with it, and uh, I don't really know what happened in an executive meeting, but um, storing <laughs> is part and parcel of a home occupancy or cottage industry. Um, what drying is. What, what, I, 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 I'm, I'm not finished. finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Okay. But you didn't dry. Tell us you didn't tell us those things. It doesn't. I didn't expect you to go as far as you did. You know, the majority of my majority of my majority of my harvest is fresh frozen for processing into edibles and concentrates. I am required by state law to dry cannabis for testing. Um, to impose that I can only fresh freeze and, and put them on a truck immediately and send them off without being able to harvest and store the product for any kind of time that's, until I can get it out. No, that's what you told us you were going to do. I was freezing it, but it's, it still takes time for it to freeze and harden and be ready for transport. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say that there was going to be a pickup truck waiting and they were going to go into mobile freezers that were being transported. I said I was using tress freezers to harvest into freezers. And the reason I was bringing that up was because the number one cause of odor nuisance is drying of cannabis in unsealed environments. Mm -hmm. I have a plan to bring in a 40-foot storage unit to dry. I'm bringing that storage unit in as a part of my outdoor license. And so I don't, I just don't, I don't know where this got off the rails. Um, I think where, what happened was you didn't disclose those things to us. Well, I and you those suggested those that you had this other facility that you would harvest mm -hmm. the plants. For, you had storage units, and they would be. So I, I think what should happen here is, you know, a storage unit and this activity was not described at the hearing before the DRB. And I think, you know, typically. I, the, the environmental division can't rule on things that were not presented to us. So um, I would present to you that, that, that H270 was passing and things would change uh, because of this ag exemption. And so I'm bringing in the storage unit to store my outdoor plants. Um, as far as I'm concerned, do I need a permit for that? Because it's ag. I'm growing a farm. You told me I couldn't have any employees, and I was planning on doing it with just myself, my fiance, and my partner. But now the outdoor portion of my harvest is considered ag. So I could have up to 24 employees for up to 150 days. Um, you know, what I told you was everything I could. And during explanations, you interrupted me and moved on to the next question that you had because you clearly weren't listening. It doesn't matter what I told you. What matters is that these are the laws and the rules being put forward by the CCB and they were ignored in creating those conditions. Um, there's a definition by the CCB of what processing is and that means the, <laughs> the packaging and storing of cannabis prior to transportation, right? So um, you put no processing there, but by saying no processing, your state, you're, you're basically telling me I can't do something that's inherent to uh, the production of my product and what's allowed to me by the state license. So you I'm not, I'm not trying to do We're not going to do any processing on site. I, but that's so not on that in manufacturing. I'm not doing any manufacturing. I have an offsite to do manufacturing. And so I, I'm not here to, I don't want to fight or argue. I want to save the town money and I want to save myself money. Um, you know, I, there are certain things that the DRB can rule on and that's nuisance, um, not anything else. Um, the other thing I wanted to just state is that with the exemptions that I have with ag, I'm growing in a greenhouse and I'm licensing that as indoor, which is what opens the door for this permitting process for that aspect of my business. Having said that, it's a greenhouse, which by definition is not a public building, is an agricultural building. 
So there's another weird caveat that's happening here. So I just don't want uh, the town to impose conditions on that greenhouse that would be any different than what's allowed for my farming aspect uh, because it, it, it would feel like that would be a condition that was, would be put forward in bad faith, right? I mean, I have 60 plants there. I could have up to 312. Um, there are two controlled greenhouses, which we have heating for at night to keep them warm, and it's just to grow like a finer product. Um, to treat those outdoor plants growing 15 feet away from those two greenhouses or have any kind of conditions that are different just seems a little crazy. Um, and then having said that, I am totally um, able to control odor and work with the town on mitigating odor. Um, the lighting thing, I totally, I accept the lighting thing. I, it's not, that's not an issue for me. I don't want to upset my neighbors. None of my neighbors have stepped forward to challenge this or against this. You know, I, so a bunch of families all extent, down here. This is a, yeah. a discussion of what would the arguments that would be made before the board. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It's not, you know, you know, I think the important thing is that a lot of what Mr. Silva plans to do was not articulated or we, we didn't hear it. And we basically approved and recited what he told us the activity would involve. And, did put in some conditions that it sounds like he's largely okay with in terms of maintaining security. And um, I mean, the concern would be that um, these are very potent cannabis plants, and that you know we had in the last couple of years, and we talked about this at the hearing, where there was a growing operation of hemp on um, Pony Farm Road, uh, and somebody came in the night and cut down all the plants, harvested them took off. So, um, you know, there were conditions in terms of, and again, largely uh, memorializing what Mr. Silva said he would do. So, uh, I mean, I think since he feels the decision is constrains him, um, you, you know, the right thing to do would be to have the matter remanded back to the board so he can come back in and we can better understand what he needs to do uh, and consider you know, that under the uh, ordinance. Um, I just want to elaborate. Things that we can consider. I mean, if, if it's true that the law has changed uh, and some of the activity is protected, agricultural activity, which zoning largely does not um, regulate, uh, that may have changed the rules since we heard the application back in the uh, was it uh, late April? April? April 20th, actually. Yeah, that's what well, I wanted you to talk about that. The, uh, and, then, and, and, I, and I, I'm just not aware, uh, but I don't, is security considered nuisance or is that something else? Um, you know, I'm totally aware of, uh, I'm conscious of not bothering my neighbors. Um, you know, at the meeting, tons of questions were asked, like, what are my lease conditions? And, you know, how do I have a renewal option? And things that I felt just had nothing to do with the meeting, but everything I've stated here tonight was supplement to my application by the zoning administrator. And she accepted my application, stated as such, and, con you know, consulted with the, with the DRB on almost everything I'm speaking about, except for the ag exemption. Uh, I warned VRV multiple times that, you know, just to not overdo it because they're limited by state law and what they can um, impose on me. And I have no issues with doing things that deal with nuisance, but something as contractual as saying that I cannot dry, store, process cannabis, given the language of the state law for cannabis, it's just a non-starter. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure the judge is going to see it the same way. The CCB already has because they're issuing me my license on Monday. But you had told us you were not going to be doing any drying or storing of product on site. Well, I, I, I have to. I have to, well, I think things have changed, you, right. you, 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 didn't, you, you didn't tell us that. So, mm -hmm. it, and if, for your business purposes, you need to engage in those activities, or maybe it's exempt under state law. 
I, I mean, I think the board. It, it's it's know, tricky, and I want to work with the town. It's exempt under state law for all my outdoor plants. It's not exempt under state law for the greenhouse operation, right? But the reality, they're 50 50. So it's, 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 it would be strange for, for, for us to have a discussion where there are impositions put on half of my um, harvest and not the other half just because of this weird language of me having lights and heating in there so I can have a prolonged harvest um, falls into indoor category. Right. That's it. Last year, when I was, in April, outdoor tier one, which is 125 outdoor plants, that is exempt as ag. This year, they extended that to all outdoor and mixed tiers. So the outdoor tiers and outdoor aspects of mixed tiers, which is what I have. I have a mixed indoor and outdoor. The greenhouses are indoor, the outdoor is outdoor. I'm only growing one fifth of my limitation. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I, I want to succeed. <laughs> I'm renting. <coughs> All right. Expensive. So, so uh, you come back and then just John, you, it up. Yeah. yeah. So how do we get this back in front of you and get all the other? Oh, well, actually, just there? as I mentioned in the other case, it's really up to the board at this point. But um, you, know, you know, I think if the, the town um, enters an appearance and participates in the, um, uh, you know, ultimately council is going to be responsive to what the board wants to do. But, um, you know, if based on input from council and the town, um, you, you know, is supportive of trying to remand the matter, so um, these other activities can be considered, that might be a very fair outcome. But it's really up to you folks. All right, folks around the table, you've heard. Um, uh, the story here tonight. Uh, what's your thoughts? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, we need to have more information about uh, H270 and whether, in fact, uh, it is exempt. Uh, outdoor, I could certainly understand, is agriculture. Uh, indoor, not so much. Uh, I think there should be conditions on it. Basically, if it's an indoor operation, it warrants different considerations. Well, it's a greenhouse. Well, it's a greenhouse with lights and heat. Right. So if you're using, but it's, 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 I just, it's, I, I've had this discussion with the fire marshal, and it's just, it's not a public building, uh -huh. right? So that's, that's also something I just want everyone to consider. Um, it's just that, like, I can't do certain things that are, that you could do for a public building. Mm -hmm. So it has a chain link fence, which allows me to create creates a border. Right. And then I have gates that have um, central alarm system security. Um, I also have all the cameras, and uh, I have a blue siren over at the house. So if anyone breaks the security system, it looks like the cops show up. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I just want to just to make sure everyone has the information, you know. I totally agree with you that if it was in, if it is as indoor, it should be regulated, you know. Um, and lighting and stuff, um, lighting, odor, anything that has to do with nuisance is like what's allowed, right. So, and I have no problems meeting those conditions and doing what it takes to keeping the town satisfied with that. So, why don't we, pardon me, um, John, do you have any uh, specifics? Yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like there's a lot of misunderstanding. Yeah. So I think that uh, we should you know, be allowed to come before the board again. All right, what we need to do is uh, we'll have Ron get involved. Ron, <coughs> reach out to you, John. Um, I don't think, um, I, you, you know, I think Ron should, we're the DRB. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've kind of passed along my thoughts. Yeah. Um, you know, we, like I said, in connection with Bliss Ridge. We're presented with an application, we hold a hearing, we ask some questions, we try to review the materials, and make a decision. And then really, we've done our role in the process. And certainly, the way this plays out, instead of trying to try a case in the environmental division, it came back to us. Like I said earlier, that from you know, my personal perspective, and not, I'm just wondering whether that might be a good way to um, move the thing forward without 
excess extents and time for all the parts. All right, so Mr. Silva, we are trying to reach out to you and mm -hmm. where you are turning. Mr. Silva is represented by Langmar. Okay. So Ron will reach out to your attorney, mm -hmm. um, similar to what we've been doing working with Liz Rich. Um, we will work with you to facilitate the permit and turn you all the information, get the latest laws, and work out something that works um, uh, well for both parties. Totally. And uh, just just while, while, we, while I brought up the storage unit, the reason I wanted to use the storage unit was to store the product um, during the short term so that I could take it to my manufacturing facility in lump sum. Um, so I'm looking at a, what they call a reefer box, incidentally, which is a fully insulated sealed box sealed that I can climate control to store um, any product. And it's, you know, that will also have uh, cameras that record for 30 days um, as required by the CCB. So just to put that on your radar. Um, All right, well, we certainly appreciate you uh, willing to, to, to do those things. We'll look at the appeal, we'll look at what you're appealing, and we will um, figure out how to work with you on those issues. Great, thank you. Thank you. John, is there anything else? No, not for me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, nice to see you as well. Happy holiday, I know we get into the holiday coming up here. Um, folks, did you yeah. have any? We have some misunderstandings we'd like to clear up. I don't know. John said if you want to. Well, I can sit around for a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. But I, I don't think you, you're, there's, like I said earlier, there's a decision the board made that's been appealed to the environmental division. Just um, that things also have come up actually kind of similarly. We were told by a different told about a different category that our business fits into since we originally applied for the single family dwelling because that was the only category that the zoning administrator could come up with as like a okay this is but, where. But you're I think to. again, I, I it's kind of the DRB listened to the evidence and we made a decision, and I think our work is done on, on that matter, and then there's the. Notice of violation, which was issued, which we didn't, but the appeal from that is to our board. Right. So I think it really should be in the context of that appeal and a board public hearing. Well, that, that we're hoping like that that doesn't have to take place because we've now been working for 15 months towards a resolution, and we were told to get a lawyer, and <laughs> so we've had a lawyer since since the DRB meeting. And the town has a lawyer, and the lawyers uh, should talk. And okay. it shouldn't be, I shouldn't be in that conversation. Okay, it's just that things have, all right, I don't know, okay. things have changed since your decision, and also there were errors, like, at play there that I think kind of screwed things up, and so there's been a lot of misunderstandings since then, and so it just seemed like, I said, well, can I just go to the meeting and explain? And our attorney said, oh, there's no point because it's not in the hands of the select board. And then it's, this has been going on and, um, and, and on and, and, and on. And, and, and our attorney summer. says, it, it's really, like, Ron is so busy right now that it's hard to even get in touch with him. So it's like, it's literally been 15 months. And we've had, never had any intention of not complying. And we're just like, it's the most stressful experience ever because we're like, okay, we'll do anything that we need to do. Oh, look, here's the accessory on our business. This is what we are. Here are the requirements. And so the zoning administrator accepted all of that. And so now there's only more. And she said, the DRB said there was no road frontage, but there is road frontage. So that's, you know, that takes away this there's entire argument that there's a setback issue with the neighboring property. So that now the only issue that's standing in the way of our permit is the stream that's marked on only the USGS yes, map yes. that is in the town yes. office. But the ANR maps do not classify any surface water on the property at all. And so they gave us our wastewater permit and we followed the septic design, which puts the septic tanks where they are and they are not 50 feet from that surface water yet we're still fighting about the treehouse being too close to 
a stream that's not not a stream. It's a drainage, but it is classified as surface water. So that's the one issue that's now standing in the way of our permit. We wanted to, for a moment, just resolve one treehouse because there's one treehouse that's the that's not no complete issues. one. It doesn't have the stream issue. There's no setback. There's no issue really. So we wanted to just kind of divide the two and try to obtain a permit for that and then deal with this. So our attorney advised us to do that. So then we frantically spend, you know, staying up past midnight, fill out a new application. We think, okay, at least we can finish construction while we're waiting for this issue to be resolved with because the stream. Because we're in court. And then our attorney told us to do that. And then I emailed Karen and she's, oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm not allowed to accept a permit for this treehouse because it's already on an existing application, even though everybody acknowledges that that makes no sense. So now we're stuck, and it's, it's Weeks and weeks and weeks keep and rolling just, by. And money is just being, I mean, we've spent money that we don't have. It absolutely We're getting to the point where we don't even know if having a lawyer is it's beneficial, done. and maybe we shouldn't have had him because the amount of time and effort that Jordan has put forth to communicate to the lawyer, to communicate to the town, which to communicate just doesn't. To run, to then communicate to the town, and then come back to the and then it takes weeks and weeks and weeks. She might as well just be nice. It's just a little should. misunderstanding that we would like to clear up. It just seems so over the top. We have no intention of doing anything wrong. We got a state wastewater permit. We thought that that was it. We have no foundation. We have, our structure does not affect the surface water in any way. And then we have this logistical issue with the zoning regulation. And the problem is that the state maps are different than the one town map that they use. It's not, it's not an ecological issue. It's not about protecting the stream. There, there's no stream. It's a seasonal runoff that goes by one of our structures. And we have a neighbor who just keeps coming in to bug the town well, again. Well, we have a neighbor who's harassed us for 13 years for things that don't exist. He calls right. state authorities and has them come out and say, and, and then they see that we're not doing what he said that they were doing, and they apologize and they leave. So it's like an ongoing issue that, that one we don't know how to resolve, but we have right. some but suggestions. But we love ideas if you got any, because this is getting it's scary. to the point where it's Well, scary. as John mentioned earlier, um, you folks have an attorney, our attorney, uh, Ron, and I know I speak with him on a weekly basis or something, a couple times a week, about trying to work with him to figure this thing out. Mm -hmm. uh, no one here or, uh, in the town government that is trying to thwart things or slow things down. Um, you know, we're just going through the process. And unfortunately, you know, once you get into the court system, things take longer uh, and, and probably are, are you know just not really common sense used a lot of times so, or, or such going on. Like I said. You've got the second one you're trying to do a permit on, but you can't because it's it's because it's in litigation now on the other one, and that's why the zoning district can't also the, do um, anything with it. But I know, based on my conversations with Ron, it, to me it seemed like you were you were towards the end of the the trail here, and you were working with the federal government on the, the stream issue. Is my only understanding is really what's holding you back at this point is. It, it's just a screen issue. Is that correct? That's correct, but that's been correct since for always. It's just that we didn't know about the accessory on farm business category until Ron suggested well, it. To right, and that's why we're trying to help. And that was in April. And so we filled out everything right away and got that all so, sorted out. I mean, I, I'd like to excuse myself. Yes. As I said, yeah. that's why I'm trying to get him out of here. There's a session. Our DRB has jurisdiction over that NOAB appeal. Uh -huh. um, these are things that, you know, and, and your matter may come before our board again. Um, uh, and if it does, you know, we'll do what we're supposed to do in terms of listening to evidence and points. Um, Thanks, John. I appreciate it. That's why I'm trying to get you out of here. I know you're <laughs> cringing because you you don't want to break the uh, law or what you're supposed to be hearing or not hearing. Um, and as I mentioned, I work with Ron closely. We're trying to help, um, you know, figure this out for you. It is, it is no, uh, it's different. There's not a lot of uh, case law with it or, or, or such to do it. Um, but again, and that's why Ron brought up the, the home ag 
issue. Yeah. Trying to find a solution for yeah. it. Um, and then when we were like, great, that, you know, there were mistakes in the DRB decision, like, regardless of that, but that, you know, the accessory on for business, obviously, that's a very fitting, I mean, that is what we have always done. We just didn't know that there was a formal category for it. So that was certainly helpful. And then, and then our attorney said, great, now that we have that sorted out, just let's fill out a single application so that you can at least finish your one structure and, you know. All right. Well, I, um, again, I'll call on tomorrow to see if there's anything in our end that we need to be doing. But I think, um, based on my last conversation with them, that it was really holding the, the stream issue with something the that. Stream, but we don't know what to do because we can't move the stream. It mm -hmm. just doesn't show up as a stream well, on the state maps. We have information I'd move the stream. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to do that. That would be a good idea. Yeah. No, but it's not a stream, though. No. It's, it's not a stream. Exactly. The it's only a place, it's a runoff, it's dry most of the year. It is like, it's well, shocking. So that's that what, it's we don't know why, why the town can't give it an exemption to that. The state uh, maps say the that state it's, not says it's, not it's not a stream. They put our stream right next to it. There's no stream on them. And they gave us these wastewater permits with literally the, my septic tanks very close to the stream and lines, water lines and septic lines going underneath. Because it's not the stream. stream. <laughs> It's run. dry, the only time that, yeah, it's runoff. So we're and just telling it's, like, it's a dry, I sent the And pictures. the foundation, which there, there isn't really, mm -hmm. the, these things are hanging 15 feet in the tree. They don't affect So the they don't affect any stream. Right. right. So it's just like, I know it's like you said, that sometimes it's like you can't really look at the logic of it. No, it's hard. And, and yeah. <laughs> You know, there are, you know, there's more than one person in town that questions what's going on, too. So just don't feel like there's... Well, that's what we're really confused about, because that neighbor has a history of going around and telling people things right. that are not true, and getting people angry, and you know, the minute we find out about it, or anyone else we go and clear it up. You guys that person. know it's on the back side of our property, up against Doug and Gale, and they are all A-OK -okay with it. It, and nobody can see like, us. It does not. There's no when noise. When the leaves are off, you can see it from the road. In November. Right. But it's it's a tiny step. Right. right. I mean, there's there's houses that are way closer to the road and way more. There, I would love to hear. I I just cannot imagine how anybody could possibly say that anything that we're doing is affecting their life. The weddings. Okay, we've been through. Everything for our events business. We we monitor sound on a regular basis. We are like that is tight and that is a totally different business. And we have taken every precaution. And the only person that's ever complained about that is the same person. And then he will go and he will tell his girlfriend to file a complaint and or his the, friend to file a complaint. The other thing is these tree houses, but the one tree house that you know we have rented for the past couple of years. I mean, I don't need to get into like you know mushy gushy, but people just. So appreciate it. I mean, our parents just, come there to babysit our kids. Our, yeah, our family um, comes there to be yeah, like a big wish. Yeah, that, that wanted to book the thing, but we're like, uh, sorry, <laughs> the town said you can't awesome. use it. So <laughs> well, we, yeah. I, I hope that was. Um, the main wish we got the we got, oh, yeah, I was going to say that. I, yes. uh, we also have a few other people who were trying to stay that have won the Treehouse Stay in a charity auction. We've done nonprofit auctions, we do nonprofit fundraisers, and we offer the Treehouse as a prize, like a big prize. And it's like, so we have a couple people that are waiting to use that stay. And, you know, we have wedding guests that, or wedding clients that wanted to use the Treehouse as a day use to save their vows. In. And now I'm like, sorry, to have to change your whole wedding plan because. Um, again, we're, we're trying to work with you. If you have the social issues, such as the make a wish, um, the heavy lawyer contact Ron. Ron will talk to me and, and we can work with you on, on these things. Again, we're not, we're trying to navigate this to, to make it at the end of the day that everyone is, is happy. Um, I totally and, get it. And just, just understand that don't feel like you're alone. There's, I've been on the board, I think, 12 years now, and I will never understand neighbors. I mean, John's been on here 30 something years. He can probably tell you the same thing. I, I just, it's not simple things, life, you know, I just, it's not, there's a lot of there's, whatever it is for being And you just don't understand it, and so you don't try to. But, you know, I just ask you to continue to go through the, the process. process. 
um, and we will work with you through the process and um, you know, we'll try to do it as painless for all. I and mean, we don't want to be in court. We don't want to uh, put someone out of business, just like Mr. Silver or whatever. We're not. So do you guys, do you guys have a sense of, um, you know, so we're not compliant, so we're going to be like getting a fine for not being in compliance? I'm just kind of wondering what, what that is and, you know, if we're still not in compliance, like, is this like, depending on what we do moving forward without a permit, are we going to be getting, like, a bigger fine? Well, or, like, the idea is that you stop renting it and stop building, is that correct? Right. <laughs> All right. Well, just, long yeah, time, we've lost the whole season. Exactly. Right. Decision that said it was non compliant, it was, that's uh, when we will really start looking at it. You, you can't do that. As much as we'd love to have you up there entertaining people and doing things, you can't kind of thumb your nose up at the, at the town DRB and say, well, you know what? We're going to do it anyways. Well, I'm just, that's how it applies. We're like, we are not trying to just like, we've been kicking the can down the road. It's my problem. Right. There's nothing so, that's happening. That so we're not looking to go forward and uh, we're not looking for money here. We, we, we're, yes, there, uh, and I worked with Ron and trying to figure something out. I mean, the, the fines can be $100 per incident per day. So you could, you could have thousands of dollars worth of fines. That ain't going to be. So don't go home tonight and, and think that's. Well, well, the lawyer pays it. Right. That'll be a lot more than your something here. Again, we're trying to figure this out and work with you. Not put you in the, you know, arrears and, and such. Um, and as a select board, we can only do so much, anyways. It's when it gets to the courts. And there's the DRP. I mean, there it's their decision. It's not our decision. I mean, we're, now it's finally coming to us where we can um, try to make it and work with I guess the part that's so hard is that I mean, the whole thing is wild. Seems like full of misunderstanding, but. The hardest thing is that, like, they made, there were mistakes in the decision, and then we don't have an opportunity to explain that. And then, like, you know, a random neighbor makes a complaint, and probably got, if there's another person, I will guarantee that that neighbor called that person and told them no, something. No, and then we're not in compliance, and then we have to appeal it, and, you know, pay $300. Because if one we don't person, appeal it, then we're screwed. Moving one forward. person who has a history so, like, of being mentally ill. We're having to, you know, I mean, whatever, $300 is like not that much compared to all that we're doing. But still, it's just a slap in the face. Let me interrupt you for a minute here. I have a question. If, if I don't like something and I come and complain to the zoning administrator that so and so is doing something and it's not even true then the zoning administrator can make a complaint out and come and then, and then and you gotta that and that person has to pay $300 to prove you their innocence. $12,000 to a lawyer. No, I'm talking about the latest, and the $300 right. fine to prove right. you're innocent right. on a claim yeah, that was absolutely not true. And it seems to me it. that that's a little backwards. That if that claim was an absolute, out of the blue, total not true thing, then why should I have to pay to prove myself innocent of so the well, claim? Yeah. Um, it's the latest. So the, that was the appeal. Um, and uh, what was the violation was because you were uh, building and renting. But we weren't. We weren't. We, weren't. Well, we haven't been so, yeah. for 15 months. I mean, yeah. since, since we've known about or since the DRB decision, decision came out, the thing, we haven't done anything. It's sitting there. Say, I, I felt like I couldn't even go up and check the mousetrap, is how we haven't done it. Yeah, we feel like I did go up twice and check the mousetraps after I realized that that might really not be a good thing to do. I went up there to take pictures for the lawyer today, and I said, and I was like, I don't even want to be here. I feel like I'm just going to I don't know. Who, 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 <laughs> uh, there, were, there were complaints in here, and then the, the zoning administrator investigated the complaints. Then right. and she saw my dad's treehouse that in FaceTime, she posted on Instagram and she thought that it was our treehouses. 
She thought we were building a tree house. Well, well, was not the tree. No, she thought that was ours. I know, it's not ours. It was not in the basement. So we're like, really? Okay, how about we ask? Like, what's going on? Not just take it, whoever's word, for fact. So that's why we're kind of like, ah, this, this doesn't seem, that, that's why we're here. Well, also, like, the, the, said that they were going to call us and come up for a site visit after the meeting if they had further questions. And they never called, no. and I was calling saying, why is this decision taking so long? No news is good news. And then we got the decision in the mail, and we were like, oh, okay, well, there's all these mistakes in here, too. That's not true. This lot does have road frontage. Now we're stuck paying for a lawyer. We don't, that's, the, you know. I don't we have, know. The neighbor just made a noise complaint about our other business. And we haven't even had an event yet. Yeah, so. I didn't even have an event, and there was a noise complaint. So I came down here like, uh, how? Don't you have to actually have like an event, like some noise to complain about? No. But it was a historical complaint. So then she has to ask for all the dates that we have events. It's fine. Yeah, I, I, I saw the really like question. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's sound, sound the same. We understand. We know how the neighbors are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we know this what, is... in the past you've done everything right. And, um, so there shouldn't be any problems going forward. That's what, I mean, that, it just is shocking to me that anybody could say that, have a complaint about the tree cup. I was like, no, there's some kind of mistake. They, there's no way that anyone could say that that affects their life in any way. That nobody can see them, nobody can hear them. No, I mean, he was talking about the Invisible. events. Invisible. No, the noise was the events. But what right. he, Tom was saying that somebody else besides that one neighbor uh -oh. complained about the tree houses. And they're like, how? We have people coming to the farm all the time for site visits, for wedding events, for friends. I mean, there's like, it's, there's people, but <laughs> it, I, I don't know. I don't right. know. And people just, you know, may call in there, give us the, just because, like you said, they may not know all the facts and we, uh, we get what we get. Um, yeah. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're really trying to work with you, trying to figure this out. I've been working with Ron, who's working with your lawyer. Um, you know, again, that's, uh, and Ron's been working hard at it, trying to figure out how to make this fit in, into the, uh, into the uh, bylaws and, and constraints that we have here. Mm -hmm. I just thought, oh, Ron used to be the head of the ANR. He'll understand, like, he'll figure out the map issue, because how is it that a town and the state maps are not aligned? That just seems crazy. So, okay, where the town says that this is a stream, the state says, no, there's no streams here. Put your septic tank right here. That's well, I think, and that's the type of stuff that would probably go back to John at the DRB. That's why he doesn't want to hear it in this right. um, arena, so that they can make those decisions. Mm -hmm. right. It's just a time. Line. But you guys don't know what this is like, yeah, so what does that mean? Like, where are we going? We'll go back to the DRB. Well, how many weeks are we going to keep folding the calendar over and be like, okay, well, it's like the end of the season. And yeah, like, yeah, just having to shuck stuff around. And it's, it's more the biggest, not, not only is it financial, but it's stress. I mean, you guys don't hear it probably, but whatever. Like, the mental but, you, know, you know, we, we, since you started your, your business, I know um, there was issues in the, um, with the liquor uh, permits. You know, a few years ago when you were starting. And I know that before at that point, again, we're trying to do everything we can to make sure we, we got you the, the permits. So it's it's not. There was never an issue with the permits. The only issue that we've had with the events business is that one neighbor at the beginning. And the town said that we could increase our events from 10 events to 15, and he didn't like that. So he appealed it and took us to state environmental court. And then we went through mediation. And we came to an agreement, and then he wanted to renege our mediation agreement, rescind the agreement, and so we got a call from the attorney, and then we had to be in court. And that whole right. thing's online if you want to read about that. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we've been supportive, and we'll continue to be, but we're just trying to help you figure out the process. And I'm sorry it's taking longer than what you would like. Is there any timeline? I mean, Ron's really busy, but what do you think? Well, you know, if it's, you know, I think it's so again. It's Ron and then it's back to the, the DRB, we think, or just Ron and it's done? He told us one to two weeks on May 15th. Ron told that to our lawyer. 
Well, I think that right now, Ron and their lawyer are, have been in the negotiation process, if you will. Um, I think that will um, um, be sufficient for the court, and because the court just wants um, people to figure it out. They don't want to make decisions or, or set up any presence. That's why they're always looking for uh, mediation. And, um, and that's my understanding, basically, what we've, we've actually put in order just mediating between the two lawyers. And, and a lot of that was looking like, all right, how, how do we figure this out? What does this go under? That's why it was our attorney's uh, suggestion. Well, maybe if we put it into an ad business, uh, there's a way for this to work. Then I called the um, agency of ad, and the lady was really nice, and she listened to the whole thing. She said, unfortunately, it's not under our jurisdiction to make any type of variance, but the town can. The town can make a variance. The town can make an exception for this. And I was like, oh, well, I don't, doesn't so, seem like they know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, that very, you know, typically with the towns are not the ones that are able to make variances on federal um, law if it's the stream we're talking about. That's, she said that towns do it all the time. She said that for accessory on for businesses, if the structure contains humans instead of animals, that's how she put it, then it's not under their jurisdiction, but the town is, the town can do a variance. That's what she said. Mary. Mary Marr. Mm -hmm. Well, I will certainly ask Ron if he's been discussing that with your lawyer, if it's something that we can do, and in fact it is a, um, just a runoff, then certainly we're going to, again, we're willing to work with you. Um, you know, I don't know what else to say, we've been trying to, I, as soon as I get a call, I respond to it, um, trying to get back so that you folks can uh, move things along. So the board hasn't been sitting on anything, in fact, I come in and let the board know basically what, how we've proceeded in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Rather than wait two weeks, ask them if it's okay to say, you know, can I listen to you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's not, you know, we're trying to use common sense and trying to move it forward. Do you have a copy of, so the appeal is basically, do you have a copy of this? I'm not right for It's me. like, it says, you know, we are hopeful that this is not necessary, but they had, but our lawyer said, you have to do that because in case there's some type of you know issue with the discussions, then you'll lose your rights completely. Right. We didn't do that. So we had to do it, but we didn't want to do it. We don't want that to happen. So he's like, let's hope that we can come to a resolution before that is even necessary. No, and um, and I, I'll bring this up to Ron. Maybe maybe there is uh, time, so we don't have to. And there's other evidence as well um, that you have uh, as far as um, dry stream then? <laughs> well, not that so much. It is uh, uh, the fines and such, or the reason you're, you're appealing is because of uh, the fine, because of the usage and continuing building. Is that correct? The violation of is she that. Right, but I think the understanding, or our attorney said, I think that the reason why she had to actually do the NOAB is so that we had something to, to resolve appeal, to for appeal, the settlement to agreement exactly, to right. refer to, yeah. which is, to, yeah. To, to appeal. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't want to appeal, but like right. something that we could settle. Right, something, yeah. In writing. I understand that. Yeah. So then we were, then we were like, okay, wait. <laughs> He, and he's, you know, he explained, or we, we explained, I said, so I, mine was like four sentences long. And he's like, yeah, that's it, but I'm gonna add some more information. So, like, we, we cured the problem by not constructing and not having guests. So I emailed Karen initially saying, do you consider us to have cured the problem because we, right. we, we don't have the power to give ourselves a permit. That's what we're going for, but it, we thought it would be done mm -hmm. now. And so, right. We don't actually want to. I think the difficult it. part is to, you know, to overcome the construction without the permit. And typically, it's the process is you get a permit and then you do the construction. Right. So we're kind of backwards on that process. No, it's totally. Yeah, we, yeah what we address there. For, for us. And then I thought, well, 
there are other examples in the town of people who have done that. Yeah. Um, we didn't know that we needed that permit. So <laughs> we, were told, we were told that we didn't. And we went to the state. And one would think, I think that most people think one would think that if they're going to the state to get the wastewater permit, that is what you need to be ecologically mm-hmm. on point, that you get that. And they would mention, oh, there's something else that you need to do. Or our map is completely different than your town. You better check with them. Mm-hmm. No, they just said, here you go. Looks great. <laughs> So, yeah. so you do have the full wastewater permit, though, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. When you were told you didn't need a permit because it was like... It was no foundation, no structural interruption to the landscape, basically. There's no, no setback issue. Mm-hmm. It's, it's in a tree. The tree's yeah. already there. I don't know, like, yeah, I got a letter because I built a tree house for my grandkids and they said it was more than 12 feet tall, so I said it's 15 foot in there. Oh, the height isn't an issue. Yeah. Well, no, no. Apparently it was with mine. <laughs> <laughs> and mine is no longer there. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll take mine down. Oh, no. Hang yeah, on. So we're going to avoid that. We're going to avoid that problem. Oh, no. Yeah, but the height, that's one thing that they didn't say. The DLU said that it was a setback issue from the neighbor's property, but it's not because that lot has had a frontage. Yeah, we didn't notice okay. that somehow. And then it's not, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to come to a resolution on this. It's a delightful tree house. Yeah, I, I, again, Thank we're... You. Uh, You're all welcome to come. <laughs> Use it. Uh, <laughs> we can. Well, we'll, we'll, have take you party. we'll have a tree house party. Yeah, uh, uh, grand opening. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, we'll thank you for sharing your, your feelings and what's going on. And we'll work, um, again, we're working with our attorney to try to figure it out with your attorney to, to get it done. Yeah, thank you. I just, I just, like, I like our attorney as a person, but I just kind of, I'm wondering if just, he's how, like, I just, yeah. I can't afford to. Yeah. Yeah. So if we were to just not have an attorney all of a sudden, how does that work? Then um, our attorney would just work with you. Okay. I mean, we have that happen from time to time where yeah, you have other issues. If your attorney brought it far enough that you feel like you could just world it out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think he's done much that I could no, have done. The, I the just amount, thought the amount of the stress amount, that we have well, otherwise, I thought. The time that she has spent researching and getting information in all the bits and pieces and showing it to Peter, it's just been like, oh my God. This is re- well, the reason why we got him is because we don't have any time. Right, so we're we're paying paying less for, right? Yeah. 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 So it's like, why am I stressed? Maybe you've got yourself another career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, it doesn't make sense. Uh, me as a lawyer, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Half day, it'll be resolved. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you came in. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think I'm too would uh, just want me to tell you that your wife had a profound impact on her education <laughs> and her favorite teacher. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So, her name is Bryn, and she just said, this is Hogan Bloom. What, what's her name? Bryn Ballard. Bryn Ballard? Yeah, she just saw your name here, and, and she was like, oh my gosh. But this is a lot of no. I will tell Thanks you. for your great things like that. Okay. Have a good night. Thanks for coming. Ruth had a profound effect on my children too. That's so much. I'm not sure if it was good or bad, but it was profound anyways. Yeah, I know my kids too, for sure. All right, so everything you've heard, um, as I've said to the uh, Yvonne Traps, uh, and this is, uh, what's her name? Jenkins. Jenkins. Jenkins, thank you. Um, yeah. You know, I'm working with Ron. He's trying to help these folks yeah. figure it out. Um, you know, I'm not sure. It doesn't sound like their attorney it is. They're, they're happy with their attorney. But that's nothing to do with us. Um, and no one's trying to push three people through stuff that they shouldn't be doing. I mean, really, um, Ron, again, Ron came up with, you know, this is a where, this is where we can put this. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's unprecedented that renting out 
tree houses, and so there's it's yeah, starting, it's, it, it's, you need to be yeah. regulated. It's a little unique, it's, so, it's, so it's, it's, a tough, you know, uh, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. So yeah. um, I see a solution in the in the works, mm -hmm. um, but it might be you know it's not going to happen tomorrow. To yeah, I no, I think we can get there. I'm, I'm hoping. We didn't have a chance to talk really much about the uh, GHR enterprises, but it is one of those businesses that certainly is, is needed in our community or, or certainly around in the area. Um, they seem like nice gentlemen. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, the next between now and uh, July 10th or towards uh, July uh, our meeting, mm -hmm. people could take. Don, I know you're on your bike, John, take a ride out that way. Just see if you see any improvements. Yep. Well, I'll check on a weekly basis. Yeah. Well, they did feel the worst, the worst one they did. Good. Up something temp temporary. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with a temporary, you know. Yeah. Just to fix the fence they got there, there's no reason not to. You know, you can go in with some freaking sheet metal nails and right. 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 pieces of stuff and get something up. Is it going to look great? It might not look super great. They can hammer it out. They can make it presentable, or it's just not. Right. It's crap falling down on the ground, you know. No, I just also remember the, the previous the one. Weed whacking, the brush hogging. Yeah. Yeah. Just going by and looking at the open gate to the entrance with the house on the left and the right. All around there was. Uh, uh, the just, was yeah, like the war zone. Was yeah. I'll, I'll go. I don't know how to make now that we've talked to them about the fence, I'm more than willing to stop in there and yeah. and, and yeah. to talk to them and say, you know, hey, you've been a couple. No, you've seen the reason of people. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he mentioned because uh, yeah. I I use them as a resource myself. So when I got scrap metal, yeah. I bring it down there. I don't want to drive all the way to freaking bulldogs and yeah. you know, and, uh, listen to the whatever people. the hell it is. Yeah. Give us an insurance. Yeah. That he'll build a fence by next spring or, or something. Yeah, and he says he wants to clean up that area that you discussed, you know what I mean? Make a better fence even though people want to look at it or whatever. Right. I don't know. Sasha, you got anything for us? Uh, Sean brought it to my attention that there needs to be a replacement for Ray on the stormwater project. Replacement for Ray on the stormwater project. Because Ray is the clerk of the works. Clerk of the works. Trying to find you doing that. Yeah, I've been doing that. Is it there supposed to be two people or? I thought Cheryl was another person. Oh, I don't know. I don't mean, I don't know for the slight quote. We need anybody else. Okay. All right. I'll let her know You're shirking the duties already, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Somebody else. Look, we got ready to be done. <laughs> um, Yes, anything for you? Uh, no, I don't have anything else. Don, what you got? Got a couple weeks, you feel alright? I meant to check on you. No, I'm sure. good. I'm good. Uh, I was just wondering the, the speed trailer, so we're just been moving that around town? Or well, it's at Cheryl Lynn's house now, so I don't know how long we plan on leaving it there, but it's been there probably. Oh, it's on, so it's on the river road now? It's on the river road right in front of our house. Flash. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's flashing me, and we're going to drive up my road. Good. <laughs> You really slow down. Uh, I, I wouldn't make a recommendation. Maybe it's time to move it. It doesn't need to be there permanently. So. Oh, no. That uh, yeah. 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 yeah, so maybe. Oh, yeah. 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 About a week at a time. He's been leaving it for like two weeks this time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we may want to shorten that up. I know it's kind of a pain to move in this spot. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said, Sasha. Stefan's been moving it around different, until we got the plates for the trailer, he's been moving it around to different parts of town for like two weeks, he'd let it sit there. And I just got the plate last week, so. Cool. Mm, yeah, so, yeah, whatever, a couple, week and a half, week or something yeah. like that. I mean, it's a great location from our perspective on our part. But I like it, like, um, Pony Farm Road, yeah. Holly Benefit, yeah. on other places. Uh, there's a lot of places. Yeah, 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 yeah that whole area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, we giving uh, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the data and giving it to the 
Yeah, no transportation or sure. sheriff's department or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It gets all forward. Cool. And while you were the the flashing sign. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. I would see it. I gave it a hug the other day. That's uh, uh, yeah. I think that's a good spot for it. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. I think yeah. that was uh, I think a good decision. You know? too, too well, send the town when you almost leave the town for yourself. But sometimes, yeah. even with the trailer, we can put it back here in town, yeah. you know, and by the fire station just yeah. to remind people sure. again. You know, We're going to turn on the other side, we're going to come in the town. Yeah, right around the next one. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'd like to see it utilized most for pedestrians, but then I think about it the river road, we have so many bikers and so many runners and so many. Now that's actually yeah. a very appropriate well, that's place. That's the main room. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, just something that um, I don't have a lot of details on, but just to, be, to think about. Um, Corey is working on trying to get some more details, but I thought we would just let you know about it. Is that there's someone who's interested in renting? Uh, the town hall on a long-term basis, you know, like uh, I think it's weekly to um, have martial arts classes or something. And he has, you know, he has insurance. And um, uh, so, no, stay tuned, no details yet. And of course, you know, the media are talking about what the criteria would need to be and what needs, how it could be set up. And, you know, who would be responsible for what, this, that, and everything. But, you know, it could be a good thing. Yeah, good thing. Just keep the post going. I mean, the library is going to be for demonstrations. Corey's going to be coming to the next meeting. She'll have some more details to the July 10th meeting. Great. So let us know. Any luck on her cleaning? Well, she's got the ad up, Good. but I, she has the penalty think she's heard anything. Yeah, it's, I asked about a bunch of cleaning companies that work for my son and stuff, and it was, it was a tough sell. So. Uh, Don, have you, have you been working with the um, uh, library trustees at all? Any of that? Have you worked also? Mm, not so much. I, I mean, a while ago, I, I went to a meeting. Uh, I haven't been to a meeting recently, though. I still do. Friends or something. Yeah, because um, one thing's come up that kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, oh, six, eight weeks ago, Sherilyn had asked um, trustees about donations, want to know about their calendar and what they had. Um, and they've uh, essentially said, no, we're, 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 they're not showing us, not sharing it with us. And, um, I don't think it's the trustees, it would be the friends. Oh, the friends. The friends. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it is a town library. Um, the first time she asked, they said, you know, it was just blown off as well. The, you know, the money is being spent on great things. You know, look at the, the, the walk or things that we have, which we, I think we'd all fully agree, it is nice. Um, and she said, because it is a town library, we need to report certain reporting. So and also to just have an account. Right, an accounting is all we wanted. And then um, they came back with, well, we have the friends that are 501c, their own private um, organization. So basically, stuff it. And uh, quite frankly, that doesn't. Well, I'm sure they didn't say stuff it. They didn't say stuff it, but uh, close to it. said no, right? And they said, this is, the, this is uh, what we are, and no, we're not, we're not, we're not sharing with you what, what we have for our finances. And you know, we work with the library and the friends and, and the trustees, I think, as much, if not more, than any group here in town. And to have them just basically, you know, I'll, I'll show you emails. And no, 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 but I'll, I'll, I, I think I'll, that's, maybe you know, I, to me, it's a little petty. Uh, I'm not looking to uh, to spend their money. I just think it's you know what, just like we have with the fire department. Yeah, keep the books. You mm -hmm. know, we want to know what you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we you know, what's our budget for the library? Forty thousand or more? Um, okay. Okay. So they just want to be a 
private stuff, and mm -hmm. they can have at it. But I well, know. Let me so let me suss it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about asking what the problem is. Yeah. Okay. Could be just a misunderstanding. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, we also had a complaint or a few different complaints uh, most recently this morning uh, from. I can't remember his name, but he's on group two uh, about this, the um, rest area over there. People camping. Well, people camping again. People camping again. So, the so town on group two, two, that oh, rest area on group two. Right. Yeah. Like, I just came to Yeah, when I went by this was, morning, I didn't it notice that. I just for... noticed how badly maintained it is. Yeah. The, the station carrying there. Yeah, so, so we, uh, we filed. Uh, We've uh, pushed off complaints to that just to the state police. That's that's their deal. Mm -hmm. um, but Sasha, can you uh, or does anyone know who we should reach out? Probably the district over here, the state bars, because like you said, it is it's not maintained. No, at no. All. no. Um, I I thought that thing got all cleared out because remember there was. It was a little dicey there a few well, yeah, years ago. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, yes. And then I thought the state came in and like cleared everything out of there and didn't make it like a rest area anymore because it was. Yeah, it yeah. Was well, seat, there's only like one paper table now or something. Or something. But, yeah. I, think there's, I think there's more than one, but, yeah. uh, but and there's a sign that, you know, that shows that it's a picnic right. area. Yeah, and, right. And I, yeah, it's fine, but it's a oh, picnic. still now? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Because I thought they closed it down a few years ago. Well, they, they went to yeah. close at one point yeah. because they were, remember those tall, it was all tall the tall pines, pines that fell yeah. 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 So they cleaned that up, but no, I, I know. I know. No, no, there was, there was a lot of stuff going on yeah. back right. in the day. Right. Right. And so um, if you could find out who we should reach out to to uh, talk about maintenance of that area. John is here. I spoke with um, Ray um, on the sidewalk. He said that, um, I guess Joe Gatton-Ray was going to give an estimate or something. On the sidewalk. Yeah, okay. and he, he never did. So uh, Ray's going to go back to uh, uh, Jeff. Uh, really? Is that Newton? Yes. Um, and because um, he offered to write a check for a thousand dollars. So we're gonna go back to him and see if that offer still stands. Yeah. <clears throat> to fix it? But that yeah, right. Yeah. Like yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it would probably be more than a thousand dollars. Yeah, I would yeah, imagine. Um, and um, I also uh, spoke with him at, on the crosswalk and he said that he, you know uh, actually, I'll get him, I'm going to forward him the, uh, the email that shows uh, the diagram and everything. Um, yes. and, yeah, and, and Thursday morning we're having our kickoff. Right. The stormwater. Okay. So uh, he, he said that uh, we'll talk about it then. So. With who? With uh, Ray? Ray what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I, I said is just, just give us a ballpark of what it costs, right. if you could. To do to rework the this side and build what they think the, right. instead of what Chris actually told us we could do more right. temporary, but then Ed came along and said no, no, Ed cares, right. Right. So, right. so to actually build a concrete yeah. ramp and everything right. with the post office side, right? So, yeah, 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 while we wait for the wastewater, right? Well, I mean, that actually, it, it sounds like the, the sidewalk has to go in next, by next summer. Because 2024 is what Sherman said, so. So, I, I doubt the wastewater is going to be happening no. before then. No. So, hey, I don't think the wastewater is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it will happen at all. Right. <clears throat> Then to come around and dig up the sidewalks and then it does. Oh no. We already have to dig up one side and then we'll like both sides. Right. So that kind of um, and how about a voter turn? 
Oh, the greater? Yeah. When we get 12 people? 118. 118. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did it pass? I didn't. Yeah, yeah. 180. Well, that seems like a fair representation. Yeah. Um, I got four votes in my, my wife and my kids. We were in the 20? Was that the 20? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> we were four. We were out there assigned. Uh, so I, I spoke to Martin today on the greater. Um, again, prices were evidence very similar. Um, he still had some questions. He was going back and asking delivery dates, uh, confirmed delivery dates. Um, he didn't. He wasn't overwhelmed with it, um, either of the salespeople or what they've been doing and trying to help him figure it out or what's best for the, for the town. Um, yeah, so, but he's been doing a fair amount of research to really figure out which machine he wants. And he's told me he's right on the fence. He doesn't, he doesn't know. Um, one of the things that I expressed to him is I think it would be better if we take delivery of that into um, uh, 24. Like early 24 rather than have it here October and sit in the garage for right. until March. Six months till March. Right. right. And pay for it during that time. Yeah. Where is it? We have a truck that sitting we're going to get right? Right. Yeah. And so we sitting idle, idle there for less. Um, we can do it. Right. To him, like he said, we're, we're gambling on this machine that we're hoping to get to the end of the year. Yeah. So really, it, it doesn't matter as long as we can guarantee that we get the other one mm -hmm. by March. Um, so he's, you know, talking to them about that delivery uh, right. first first quarter of the year, um, rather than you know October, November, mm -hmm. because again, it's not going to do us a lot of good sitting in the garage. You know, maybe a little bit of use for snow banks, but um, yeah, but, you know, we can save six months. Financing and Finance lack of, you know, non-use, really. Just really non-use. Just saying, right, yeah. You know, on your warranty. You yeah. know, you want to. The warranty, it's going to use up and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, I expect up here we need to talk about this afternoon. Yeah. We'll get back to me. But, you know, I'm just So I suppose, or I expect by our next meeting, we'll have um, a choice there to make or a decision to go ahead and back up. Um, other than that, I haven't heard uh, talk to anyone who said uh, that, you know, things are going well. Or they're just doing little projects uh, here and there across town. Um, they're possibly going to tackle the big um, culvert that was a problem on the hill. It's a fairly deep one, so they're, they're, they're not sure. They're just going to push that off next year, but I reminded them that we have a parking lot next year that we that he's going to have to plan on doing it. Right. Um, so not pushing anything off. It may, it may come there. Um, but I think that's, <laughs> that's it for those guys. Uh, I'll have, I'll talk to Ron. I'll have him reach out to, to Silva's. Is that, was that right? Yeah, Silva, uh, his attorney, to try to Button up. It sounds like there was a lot of miscommunication. Or, I mean, if the law was not passed, if it, certainly the DRB is not going to be making decisions based on what could be coming with law. So yeah. the law yeah. changed, so it can't really relate like that on the DRB. You know, things yeah. change, uh, and it sounds like the information that they were provided uh, has expanded a little bit as well, as far as processing on, on, on site. So I'll have Ron talk to their attorneys about that and make sh try to figure that out um, in an agreement. Like uh, they have been meeting with Bliss Ridge. It's, it's funny. Um, I really wonder whether the attorney and, and these folks are, are talking because one of the things they, they were she was discussing is already kind of been resolved. Resolved. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm wondering. Yeah. They, they should call it better communication again, not, not our problem. Um, I think that's, that's it. Um, um, we just
decided to move the meeting events for pointing that out to you. Yeah, July 10th, right? Uh, to July 10th. And the 24th. Oh. So then the next one would be the 24th. No. Uh, two weeks in a row. No, I'm sorry. Oh, you're going to do two weeks in a row. Yeah. No. So July 10th and then the 17th. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Just to keep it. No, you won't, John. You can't go. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Fine. Well, that's okay. So that's good. Does that work for you? No, yeah. Absolutely. Ah, uh, all right. So uh, why don't we. Uh, take a moment and approve the select board minutes of June 5th. I make a motion. We approve the select board minutes of June 5th. Second. Any uh, discussion, changes, or anything on those? No. no. All in favor, aye. 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 All right. Tom, did you go or did you? No. I can't vote because I wasn't here. No, you, you can still go on. Oh. You can still read them. The, I did read them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, you don't need to. We'll just no, no, I, 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 I didn't know. I just wanted to check out. I did read them. And, yeah. Right. You're willing to approve. All right. Oh, I did have one more thing. Uh, Sasha, hey, I spoke with Hannah Flynn because she's my bad. Uh, she was just wondering if someone could uh, reach out to the health officer and kind of ask him to reach out to her. Does she know what her role is? No, I reached out to her. Oh, okay. Okay. I have to reach out to the sure. Yeah. Her. Okay. Uh, so is there anything else below as far as old business that anyone had any comments on? Nothing below but the tree, Sasha. The third person is supposed to. They had to reschedule. They had some emergency last Friday, so he was going to just get back to me on as soon as he could. Okay. Because yeah. the summer show sure works. Summer show looks pretty good. 14, 1450, something like that. I thought it was three grand. No. No, no. no that's so. Okay. Once you open up the PDF that they attach to it? Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it again. Okay, maybe I need to read it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I thought that was awful cheap. <laughs> we also, we did get a grant. Uh, I think it was for 3500 for the security. Remember when we did yeah. security? Yeah. Out of the 5326? Right. So, um, what I want to make sure is that we've got, we're going to look for the quotes. I know we have this one quote, um, but I'll have Sasha if you could look in to make sure we have done our due diligence as far as getting the quotes. Um, uh, we've got money to pay for it, uh, or pay for most of it, anyways. 35, yes, two thirds of it. I mean, was that what Sharon? Yeah, she said we've got enough to cover about two thirds of the yeah, 5326, is it about 35? She did send us a budget report on your email in case you're looking for that. I thought when I read that the, the security thing was a, that the, um, the emails, maybe I read it on it, I was looking at an email from. Cheryl, it was security for the building, or I thought it was out of the, out of the server that he needed in, by. Two in here and then two on the outside of the building. Cameras. Cameras, yes. Because some, someone broke in here, or no? No, we've had a few different scenarios that, that have happened. In the past. Oh, all right. But did, didn't Cheryl also write an email that there was something happened with the Service with the email or something that was hard oh, yeah, or something? Somebody, yeah, that was hard. <coughs> oh, all right. So I, it's just two different two issues. Different things. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so there's nothing. Um, yeah. All right. What? Uh, anything new? Oh, you want? I don't think you want to comment on as well. Um, I spoke to um, Sean Bartlett from uh, the Moorcat store, the, the people who own the 
that store. And they have um, generously donated Like they have so um, a challenge on the you, you three gentlemen to uh, find a um, a donor. We'll accept five hundred or more, and uh, just for more fest. So you should have some friends up there. Donors for more fest. Uh, I know you've got plenty of friends to, uh, to make that happen. To donate to help pay for some of the stuff for more fest. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, any uh, any new business that anyone has they want to bring up? No. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we do have a few things to sign. And uh, John, if you want to take a look, um, this Robin, I'll send you with. Uh, if you've worn that when we've done, you want to start looking at this. Uh, this is mostly payroll, but. Does our town go all the way to Route 100 by still, still fire there? It actually splits right in the middle of the snow fire. Of the road itself or something? That's the building the bridge, itself. The bridge. I think it's, oh, I said it's a bridge, oh, okay. but I mean, it does go through, I think, a lot of snow fire. I was just curious if we were going to have conflicts with the town of Waterbury or anything that we propose. Well, I don't even understand what they were saying about the crosswalk and making the crosswalk with the lights, which that would be the problem. I think they were talking about like going across the road again. Mm -hmm. No, it would be crazy. Well, that's part of their alternative thing. That's one option, is if it's easier to go across that, that would make no sense whatsoever. Like I said, I wouldn't want to cross. I went across there even if there wasn't a crosswalk. I'd be like playing Froggy. I'd be like playing with a lot of light. That's scary, right?